mosquitoes are all out fresh. Okay, you want to clap your hands for a second? Good. That gets the audio on both of ours and allows me to sync that up properly. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you come in here for a second. So we're looking at focusing today and framing it for purposes of reframing it later, especially during stabilization, specifically during st stabilization. This is a image stabilized lens bound on the Blackmagic 4K. That's the only part that's image stabilized. It doesn't account for a lot of the heavy uh, movements. So when you're looking at framing this up for post work for stabilization, because if I'm shooting in 4K or 2K, it doesn't matter, uh, what happens is you have to allow yourself a little bit more room around the subject because in the stabilization process, which we'll go through later on, what happens is to account for the movement and such, it actually will work its translation processing and then it will zoom in because that's just part of it. Otherwise you get black borders coming into frame and that sort of thing. So it will end up probably like that. So different software, different editing software will give you a different type of response and you can certainly, how smooth do you need that shot? Like if I'm taking her from this position and moving it nice and slowly, actually we'll clap if you would. There we go. So now if I'm taking it like this, trying to avoid the insects and moving from here, my little micro jitters here will be translated to that as well, even though that's stabilized, but it's the old lens. So this is the 12 to 60 Panasonic and it's not the newer version, which has uh, supposedly better stabilization. But in general, you're going to still be looking at reframing your shots and your subjects to give yourself a little bit more room so that when you actually do go into post and you're having to adjust for that stabilization, it will zoom in. And this way you're not, you're basically you're not screwed. <laughs> if you start like this, you start filming here and we'll actually do it again and go ahead if you'll clap, there we go. And so if we start here really close, because I'm going to stabilize this later, you're going to see how, how much it's going to zoom in from what I'm actually shooting here. So if I do just where I'm barely touching the tip of her head and moving around, you're going to see how that matters later when we do the stabilization. Okay. So we're going to go through here and as I move, again, we're going to keep just the tip and that was a lot of jerky movement. So we're going to see how much that actually takes care of it. And I'm, I'm literally shaking my head because these mosquitoes and stuff are landing on me. This is Florida. So, uh, the mosquito shake will be translated directly to the, the camera easily. So, all right. Uh, so, the, uh, that's just to let you know, because a lot of people don't realize that, they don't realize what they have to do later on. Or they don't realize the limitation of their lens or the limitation of the camera. Uh, what's nice for some of the cameras later on, you're looking for built-in stabilization in the camera itself as well as in the lens. But when you don't have that, because you're working with a cinema camera, like the Blackmagic, and if you put on prime lenses on here, there's absolutely no stabilization. So a couple of tricks around that are to use a wide angle lens, because uh, when you have wide angle lens, it doesn't transfer the jitter uh, as much. Uh, anything that requires, like what I was using with shooting Anna there, that was a 12 millimeter. So that was 12 millimeter here, which is equivalent to 24 approximately. So we're looking at there's not that much jitter that you're going to see, but because I was moving at the same time as swatting mosquitoes away from my head and blinking them away, uh, there was a lot more uh, uh, 
jitter. <laughs> There's a lot more jitter introduced. So, but when you have like a 10 millimeter and that sort of thing, like I've got an SLR Magic, which I'm uh, letting my friend Josh, um, who also just got his Black Magic, I'm letting him borrow that for a shoot that he needs. And that particular lens is really forgiving on small movements uh, because at 10 millimeter, it's, it's really uh, looks stable. The other thing that people tend to do to cheat on that is to uh, shoot it in high frame rate so that they can bump it to slow motion later on. They'll reduce that. So you're looking at a 60 frame rate per second. That's slowed down. You get some nice, glorious moving shots. Uh, doesn't really work well if you have somebody who's talking. So if you have somebody doing action, and I'm going to film some action shots here in a little bit too, and I'm going to frame it a couple of different ways. One, I'm going to frame it as I want it to see it, and the other one as I know it's going to be adjusted after stabilization software, specifically DaVinci Resolve 16.3 beta, I think I'm working on beta one. It's faster than, than the other one, 16.3 or two. So I was really surprised with that. So uh, some really cool things coming out with DaVinci Resolve. Uh, it's much quicker software, um, the footage loads faster and so forth. I'll be working that stabilization in that software specifically for this footage so you can see the difference between where you want really smooth motion and framing it properly originally so that you know how it's going to end up in the crop later or uh, if you're just trying to shoot it as you would like to see it and forgetting that you're going to might that you might have to put stabilization uh, software to work on it afterwards so i hope you enjoyed that and if you did please thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't thank you